Are you winning more than your fair share of new opportunities? Are you winning the sales pursuits you can't afford to lose? Do you know why? Or more importantly, why not? Peter Burke has made a career out of creating winning deal strategies and conducting win-loss reviews on behalf of his clients. And he's an expert on helping sales organizations understand the narrow line between winning and losing the strategic opportunities that your sales teams pursue. His insights come from his experience in working with clients including IBM, Accenture, Deloitte, and CGI. He was president of a $350 million outsourcing business and previously led worldwide business development for Accenture. In Peter's keynote addresses, you'll get straight talk and proven strategies to help your sales organization win large, strategic, and highly competitive opportunities. So I'm going to try to bring to you today a perspective, that's why I call it the narrow line between winning and losing, because I actually think it is a very, very thin line between who wins and who loses. Because what we found out is when you asked a team to go talk to a client after you lost an $18 million deal, uh, the client always told the team the same thing about why they didn't get chosen. What do you think they told them? Price. It was price. Guess how often it was really price? Almost never. We're going to talk about that. I've probably been involved in more win and loss reviews than anybody I know of, of the variety that I'm familiar with, which is face-to-face -face executive interviews to find out the truth. If I have a, the best product and I have a reasonably intelligent customer and I do a reasonably good job of articulating what it is I have, what's going to end up happening? They're going to choose me. Well, I got news for you. It ain't that simple. And that's why you got to talk about the other kinds of things. Why does the client have such a high propensity to do nothing? That is the very biggest thing, is organizations by nature default to not changing. If they're not designed to choose the best solution, what's an RFP designed to do? It's to prove that whoever I intended to choose actually gets chosen at the end of the day. You with me? Selling invites that first reaction. And this is why I, I'd like to coin this term unselling. People spend way too much time on the wrong opportunities and in the wrong accounts. And we've got to learn to give ourselves permission to treat clients unequally well. Who gets lied to more, us or the customer? Hands down, we get lied to more. The reason we have leverage in the first three or four stages of the process is they need us. Don't confuse needing us with wanting us. You see the distinction? We have a tendency to walk into some of these opportunities and assume because they've invited us, they must want us. No, 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 no. They need us, but in most cases, they actually don't want us. What do they need us for? information. We, we get into this subservient sales kind of mode where the customer's up here or the prospect's up here and we're down here and the customer says jump and we say what? How high? Or they come up with this new requirement. right? Say hey I've got this new requirement. I haven't asked you about this. How do you guys handle thus and such? And of course being the glass half full optimistic customer service oriented salesperson I am, I say, well sure, let me go back to my technical specialist and do a write up on that and I'll FedEx it back to you so I can lose even faster and at greater expense. <laughs> I mean, isn't, don't we tend to be guilty of that kind of subservient sales model? 
If your team would benefit from a keynote address that is focused on educating, challenging, and empowering your sales professionals and the key success factors to qualify and win new business, contact Peter at BetterWayStrategies.com.